recording it. We are only doing a survey of the book of Exodus. We're not going to spend a whole lot of time in all the material uh, in the book of Exodus. When we do a more in-depth study of Exodus, we'll go more in detail. But Hebrew chapter 11, verse 6, tells us what pleases God. What pleases God. Hebrew 11, 6 reads, And without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. Here we see what pleases God is faith. And faith is simply taking God at his word. God said it. I believe it. And in his time, I will see what he has promised. That is faith. Even though I don't see it because of the faithfulness of God who cannot lie. I'm going to see in his time what he has promised. That is what pleases God. So without faith, so unbelief do not please God. Faith pleases God. So if you want to know how to please God, here we have it in verse 6, walking and living by faith. That is what pleases God. And so that prepares the way for our study today. If you go to Exodus chapter 20, Verse 1 through 13. We're finishing up the second section of the book of Exodus. And today I have titled this devotional this morning, Faith is What Pleases God. And what we're going to see here in Exodus 20, 1 through 13, we're going to see a number theme. One, Miriam, uh, Moses' sister, is going to die. Moses also is going to get is going to sin, and through his sin, he's going to uh, God is going to discipline him, and the discipline will be Moses will not be able to enter the promised land. And we're going to also see Aaron; he's going to also die, and they're all going to uh, uh, miss out. These leaders, Miriam, Moses, and Aaron, is going to miss out on God's best blessing because of unbelief and also the older generation um, that went in to spy the land but they failed to trust that God was able to give them the land they too will not enter the promised land that God promised them and so what we're going to see is that unbelief is like rebelling against God and as a result of unbelief we miss out on God's best blessing because God wants his people to live and walk by faith. And so can I get a volunteer to begin reading? We're going to read verse 1 through 13. Any volunteer? Exodus chapter 20, verse 1 through 13. Of your slavery. You must not have any other I'm sorry. Forgive me. <laughs> I wrote it down wrong. <laughs> numbers, numbers 20. I'm sorry. My goodness. How did I write that down? Numbers 20. Forgive me. We already been there. We don't need to go back. Numbers 21 through 13. In the first month of the year, the whole community of Israel arrived in the wilderness of Syria. While they were there, Miriam died and was buried. There was no water for the people to drink at that place, so they rebelled against Moses and Aaron. The people blamed Moses and said, If only you had died in the Lord's presence with our brothers. Why have you brought the um, congregation of the Lord's people into the wilderness to die along with all of our livestock? Why did you make us leave Egypt and bring us here in this terrible place? This land has no grain, no figs, no grapes, no pomegranates, and no water to drink. Moses and Aaron turned away from the people and went to the entrance of the tabernacle, where they fell face down onto the ground. 
Then the glorious presence of the Lord appeared to them, and the Lord said to Moses, You and Aaron must take the staff and assemble the entire community. As the people watch, speak to the rock over there, and it will pour out its water. You will provide enough water for the rock to satisfy the whole community and their livestock. So Moses did as he was told. He took the staff from the place where it was kept before the Lord. Then he and Aaron summoned the people to come and gather up the rock. Listen, you rebels, he shouted. Must we bring you water from this rock? Then Moses raised his hand and struck the rock twice with his staff, and water gushed out so the entire community and their livestock drink their fill. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Because you did not trust me enough to demonstrate my holiness to the people of Israel, you will not lead them into the land that I have given them. This place was known as the water of Meribeth, which means argument, because there the people of Israel argued with the Lord, and there he demonstrated his holiness among them. Amen. All right, so here we see Moses sin. And his sin was that instead of speaking to the rock in faith, he struck the rock in anger, which was unbelief, but it also was rebellion. And as we're going to see later, God is going to tell Moses, as a result of unbelief, you would not be able to enter the promised land. And so unbelief is going to be the reason why God's leader, leaders would not enter the promised land. Now, uh, if you go now to uh, chapter 21, and read verse, uh, get, get another volunteer. I mean, same chapter, chapter 20, verse 23 and 24, we see why Aaron would not be able to enter the promised land as well. Somebody, could you read uh, 20, verse 23 and 24? Then the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron at Mount Hor by the border of the land of Edom, saying, Aaron shall be gathered to his people, for he shall not enter the land which I have given to the sons of Israel, because he rebelled against my command at the waters of Meribah. All right, now go to chapter 21. And now in chapter 21, we see another failure of the people. So we just saw the failure of Israel's leaders, and as a result of their failure of unbelief, they would not be able to enter the promised land. And now we're going to see the people failure again in chapter 21, and we're only going to look at verse 1 through 9. Can I get another volunteer? When the Canaanites, the king of Herod, who lived in the Negev, heard that Israel was coming by the way of Africa, then he fought against Israel and took some of them captive. So Israel made a vow to the Lord and said, If you will indeed deliver this people into my hand, then I will utterly destroy this city. The Lord heard the voice of Israel and delivered us the Canaanites. Then they utterly destroyed them and their cities. Thus the name of the place was called Alma. <coughs> then they set out from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And the and patient because of the journey. The people spoke against God. Why have you brought us up here out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there's no food. And we loathe this miserable food. The Lord sent fiery serpents among the people and they bit the people so that many people of Israel died. So the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned because we have spoken against the Lord and you. Intercede for intercede with the Lord that he may remove serpents from us. And Moses interceded for the people. Then the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent, set it on a standard, and it shall come about that everyone who is bitten, when he looks at it, he shall live. And Moses made a bronze serpent and set it on the standard. And it came about that if a serpent bit any man, when he looked to the bronze serpent, he lived. Amen. So in verse five, we see the, the people's lack of contentment and their lack of uh, faith would led to them being very, very impatient. And, uh, and, and what they fail to realize is that God is the one that brought them out of Egypt. It was not Moses that brought them out. It was God that brought them out. And if God brought you out, then he has a plan for your life. And he led them in the pillar 
of fire by night and a pillar of cloud by day. So if he led them, there was a purpose for every crisis that they came to. And that purpose was to get them to recall to their mind the promises of God and to recall to their mind the faithfulness of God. But instead of doing that, they chose to not believe God, not take God at his word, not concentrate on who and what God is and operate in their emotions uh, and operate in their emotion. Um, and, and as a result, God disciplined them for their lack of faith because lack of faith is actually rebellion against God. And so here we see God provide after the, the fierce serpents came among them and bit, bit them so that many of them died. Why did they die? This is a form of discipline for choosing not to trust God because lack of faith is rebellion against God. And so God disciplined them because of rebellion or lack of faith. Now, but what God did is after he disciplined them, he provided a cure and for those who look on the fiery serpent, on the, the bronze serpent on the pole, and all they had to do is just look. And it took faith to do that. So Moses said in verse 9, and Moses made a bronze serpent and set it on the standard. And it came about that if, that if a serpent bit any man, when he looked to the bronze serpent, he lived. So that required faith. So God said, it shall come about that everyone who is bidden, when he looks at it, he will live. So that takes faith. You must take God at his word and look to that serpent on the pole in faith. And if you do that, you'll be made well. You'll be healed. Now, in Jesus' earthly ministry, he applied this incident to himself, demonstrating that whoever looked to the cross by faith, and put their faith in the work of the cross will also live, but spiritually. Go to John 3, verse 14 and 15. John 3, verse 15, verse 14 and 15. Here we see an incident. Uh, I mean, Jesus applying this incident to his himself in John 3, verse uh, uh 14 and 15 of John 3 reads, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that whoever believes will in him have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. So all a person has to do in order to be saved from a different kind of death, and that is spiritual death, it look to Jesus Christ in faith. And failure to do that is actually a rebellion against God. So every person that chooses not to believe in Jesus Christ is actually called sons of rebellion in the Bible. And therefore, they will reap the consequence of spiritual death. If you look at verse 36 of the same chapter in John 3, verse 36 say, he who believes in the Son has eternal life, but he who does not obey the command to believe in the Son will not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. So here we see that it is a commandment by God that every person in the human race believe and look to the cross for salvation and everyone who would not take God at his word will reap the consequence of spiritual death and therefore miss out on God's best blessing. So just in summary of the book of Numbers, we're not going to look at all the chapter next week. We may look at a, uh, more in the book of Numbers, but the theme and purpose of Numbers is very simple. The theme and purpose of Numbers Moses recorded that God disciplined Israel through the wilderness wandering in order to show that lack of faith brings disaster on men. God expect his people to walk by faith. And when they act in unbelief, they miss out 
on his best blessing and they only receive his discipline. Unbelief or lack of faith is like the sin of rebellion. Choosing to function independently of God and his truth. And as we saw in Hebrew 11, 6, without faith, it is impossible to please God. So not only, so the same faith that we use to get saved is the same faith we are to use to deal with the crises and the problems in our everyday life. Because now that, that we are saved by faith alone and Christ alone, God expects us to live by faith if we want his best blessing. God um, uh, promises is how we find the stability that we need to relax in crises and trust God to do what he said he's going to do. Go to Romans 1, verse 16, and uh, 16, and we'll close and take a break after this one. Go to Romans chapter 1. Romans 1, verse, uh, uh, da, 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 verse 17, I'm sorry. For, it is, for in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith as it is written. But the righteous man shall live by faith. We were saved by grace through our faith. And now in the Christian life, we're to live the same way. We're to walk by faith. And all that means is moment by moment taking God at his word, if we would do that, we would experience God's blessing. The promised land is just a picture of enjoying God's blessing. But many of God's people, believers, missed out on the blessing of the promised land because they choose not to trust God and choose not to take God at his word. Just like believers then, believers today, failed to experience God's best blessing because they failed to trust God and failing to trust God is as though we are rebelling. So let us not be as the children of Israel was. Let us not be unbelieving people, but let us be believers who choose no matter the crisis to take God in his word and trust in who and what he is so that we would not be accused of rebelling against God. Let us pray. <laughs> Father, we're just so grateful for your word which gives us promises that reveals your plan for our life. Your plan is not the crises that we go through, but your plan is the blessing that you promise in your promises. And as believers in Jesus Christ, stress is optional for us because when we're stressful, we're choosing not to think your truth. We're choosing not to think your promises. Help us, Lord, in the midst of our trials and adversity, to operate on faith and not on our emotion. Keep our minds and heart until we meet again. In Christ's name, amen. We'll take a 10-minute break and we'll come back.